welcome back to the channel and today we're not in the shop we're on i-10 headed east I'm, I'm on my way down to tallahassee to hang out with my cousin alex and we're going to be headed up to moultrie georgia tomorrow for the big annual swap meet that we go to i i went last year i got a video on that and we had a blast had a good time always enjoy going to moultrie and trying to find good deals on tools and I always find some good stuff there. So definitely looking forward to it. And I can't wait. So I'm in the new ride. That's something that I haven't shared yet here on the channel. I talked about it on the on my Facebook page, showed some pictures of it, and had a lot of guys uh, respond to it and, and had quite a few guys waiting to see it like in SNS or something. And I just I haven't I haven't really felt like doing anything about the car on video just just the car was just something for me you know it's something something uh, new for me to enjoy I've been wanting for a long time to buy me a new vehicle and I uh, always wanted a Dodge Challenger and that's what I got I got me a, a brand new Dodge Challenger and I absolutely love it it's an awesome car it's a badass car but, you know, I just, I've been wanting something new for a while, something new and dependable and reliable, something I can jump in and hit the road. If I want to go across country, I can, and uh, hopefully not have to worry about anything. You know, I, uh, my, my Dodge Durango is still, uh, it's still a good vehicle, and I, and I think it's still pretty reliable, but it's getting older. It's got 250,000 miles on it, and every now and then something messes up, I got to replace. Like I said, I just I've been wanting something newer that that I can rely on hitting the road and not have to worry about it breaking down or having to fix something before I go out of town, you know, stuff like that. I've always wanted a Dodge Challenger ever since they revealed them in 2008, and you know it's just more of a you know a wish item for a long time, and I I really really for a while now, past year or so, I've been wanting wanting to get myself one and I didn't really expect to go down and buy one this soon I was going to wait a while you know maybe another couple of years or so but I just got to the point where the uh, I think the nice weather really kind of did it for me I was ready to just get out of the shop get in the car or get in get in a vehicle and go cruise you know and so I've been looking at the challengers down the dealership and looking at prices and trying to weigh out my options and I, I finally just decided, you know, that's what, that's what I want. I'm ready for a new car, so I went for it. And I got the car that I wanted. I, I didn't settle for one they had on the lot there. I wanted a baseline. This, this is a 16 Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack. It's got the 6.4 liter Hemi in it. It's the same motor that they put in the SRT 392. So it's like a trimmed down version of the SRT model it's basically the same car to me srt's got some upgraded features to it that uh, you're going to spend more money on so this was a good option for me uh, it's less money same horsepower same motor i i wanted a six-speed manual so that's what i got i got a six-speed i didn't want automatic whenever i bought whenever i was going to go buy buy my car i knew i wanted to get a manual shift something that i could really enjoy always wanted one so I finally got myself one and I love it I love the, the the modern day connectivity that they have built into vehicles now you know something I've never had always had uh, older vehicles you know that were uh, beyond, before they put all this uh, connectivity in here so I like it you got a nice screen right here that uh, you can see your music and your phone calls and texts and all the stats of the car that's what's really neat man you can pull up the uh, performance stats if you want to go drag racing or go track uh, go around the track and you can you can see everything you want to see up there on the screen it's really neat it'll do your eight mile times uh, keeps up with your engine stats it's got another display right here uh, right here on the dash you can see everything right there it's very neat it, it's just very very pretty the way they designed it too it just looks really sweet all digital really nice coloring to it 
I just I just love it, you know, and just love the car, and I'm enjoying driving it. I just rolled a thousand miles on the odometer, just not too far back. Finally got a thousand miles on it, and a little a little sad to see the miles rack up like that. But you know, you buy a car to drive it, so I I, I didn't buy this car to to keep it in a garage and not ever drive it. I tell you that this this is going to be a driver for me. Uh, not not an everyday driver though. This is this is something I'll enjoy every once in a while and on the weekends. I'll still drive the Durango to work, you know, and, and uh, try to keep some of the miles off of it. And uh, definitely don't want to get the interior too dirty yet. <laughs> but I'll, I'll give you, I'll show you some pictures of the day that I uh, took delivery of the car. And I got a little video when I did a walk around. That's when I first seen the car. They didn't have this one on the lot. I wanted a, I wanted black, black on black. I wanted cloth interior. I didn't want the fancy leather with embossing on it. You know, I just wanted a base interior. The only option on this car is a sunroof in it, which I like the sunroof. I test drove them with the sunroof, and I do enjoy that, opening that up and having the windows down and filling the air. This is a good time of the year to do it. Down here in Florida, it's not too hot, but I got a sunroof, and, and that's it. You know, but they... They really equip these cars really nice though. It's got it's got everything else you want on it. Great looks, great performance. Sounds good, man. It sounds really good, especially when you you really want to hammer on it. So that's it. You know that's that, that's the new ride. Like I said, just something for me to enjoy, and I've got a dependable car that I can drive down the road now if I want to go somewhere. I'll uh we get to any kind of shenanigans over here in Tallahassee I'll make sure I have the GoPros with me I've got my uh, got my gimbal mount here too <laughs> and maybe me and Alex will take this and Big Red out and maybe go do a burnout or something which I, I have not done yet in this car I, I have not done any burnouts I've, I've broken the tires loose a couple of times but uh, there was a there was an F350 that wanted to race me one day and I didn't expect it so I kind of nailed it in second gear boy, and they just broke loose <laughs> but that, that was fun so anyway I'll give you a little interior shot of what the car looks like and uh, and that's going to be it guys so hopefully I'll get some uh, interesting footage over here in Tallahassee whatever whatever we get into just going to be hanging out with Alex maybe I'll give you a little update on what his projects are and what he's been working on and and uh I'll take the camera with me up the Moultrie and maybe I'll get some video there to kind of show what we what we see at the swap meet there. All right. Just cruising down boring I-10 I east. There's really not much to see here. Florida's pretty flat. So here's a here's a shot of the the inside of the car. I really like this this new display. They changed this interior last year for the 15 models, and I was I really love this interior. When I was looking, I was actually looking at used Challengers, and they they had the you know the older generation of the dash and everything in here, and I really enjoyed the way that this uh, the way this new one looks. So the fuel economy is doing pretty well been cruising about 72 or 73 miles an hour just taking it easy and I've been averaging about 24 miles in a gallon so not bad at all doing good and I just rolled over a thousand miles I think I mentioned that so about a thousand twenty eight I did I did option for the six-speed manual that's what I wanted I wanted a manual shift car in black black on black with cloth interior so now yeah, I love it man having the having a stick shift with some with some horsepower underneath the pedal very cool all right so that's a that's an interior shot for you This next segment is about my stop to visit a viewer of mine named Mark Lindquist, and he's in Quincy, Florida. 
And an episode back on SNS, I showed where Mark had had printed out some a canvas prints of Stella and sent them to me. So on the way there, I contacted Mark. I called him and asked him would he like for me to stop by and visit him, and he said absolutely. And I'm really glad that I did. Mark has got a really interesting, neat place there. He lives on a tobacco plantation, and he's got a really cool studio there where he does wood sculptures and photography and printing and all kind of neat stuff. I wasn't able to get a lot of video of his stuff, but I plan on returning to visit Mark in the future, and when I do, we'll get some more video of his place. So this is some of what we got with my visit there. Um, the head of large format for Hewlett Packard uh, come here to visit from Barcelona. And there's Mark's shop. There's, there's part of the shop. Anyway, this looks like the, uh, the, the workshop, though. Well, this is, um, this is the front studio, we call it, and it's mostly work with uh, metalwork, and it, it, right now I'm doing some woodwork as well, so uh, it's kind of mixed in together, and it, it makes quite a bit of confusion is what it does. Yeah. But. Well, very nice. Here's, a, here's an example of, of, of something that Mark does quite a bit of. That, that's okay. Uh, he takes this wood and uh, he, he works it and puts it into this vacuum chamber right here. You can see some of it, some of the pieces that he's got cut up in his uh, shop right here. And it makes it it makes it really dense when he does that. It's you'd be surprised, like this block right here, just how heavy that thing is. It is just solid. Very neat stuff. He's got a really interesting place here on this old tobacco farm. There's his lathe. He's got a Birmingham lathe. An old bridge board I got from uh, yep. oh. a friend who who. Uh, Got that from the Kodak tool room. Oh, nice. You got a big 8-inch vise on this thing, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very this, cool. This is, uh, you can see right there, uh, it says Kodak right there. That came out of their tool room. It, it was uh, nice. salvaged. Right, right that's, that, that belongs here, man, you know, from one photography shop to another. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm checking out his his machine right here, his Birmingham lathe, and I was I was telling him that you know some some of the things that I'm pointing out right away, you got a solid casted base on it, which is really what you want with a good quality lathe because it makes it more rigid. But I think that this is the same machine that Victor uses for their lathes. It looks identical to it, except you know this one being a Birmingham. But he's got a nice lathe right here. It's got a nice feel to it. I, I like it. Good job, man. It's a rammable uh, controller in it, and you can ramp it up, and, and they have what's called a soak time, which just means an extended period at a certain uh, temperature. Um, this big pattern that is laid, I got this up in uh, uh, Connecticut. Uh, a friend called me up and said, hey, this, this shop is cleaning out and, and this stuff has to be moved by the end of the week. Do uh, you want it? And I said, how big will it swing? And he said, <laughs> he said just come and get it. And Any, said, anything you want. <laughs> I walked out the door an hour later and was there in, in, in 28 hours. As oh, yeah. A work positioner. And uh, I, built the, I built the electronics for it. Um, and it's, it's a neat thing because I can get it to come right to me, mm -hmm. you know, bring the work to yourself rather than, you know, and, and also at the height you want it to be at. I want to be working right there. Right. And let's see, I want to, you know, the nice thing is to be able to see what the light is doing. That's what sculpture is all about. And, you know, then you can be working with the tool, live tooling right here, you know, uh, so this is one of Mark's studios here, and this is, this is a, a prime example of some of his creations, what he makes out of, out of, his, uh, out of the wood and the sculptures. 
These are pieces done over a probably a 45 year period. Really? And it's sort of our own museum. It's a storage museum, I call it. And many of the pieces have gone uh, to Japan, to England, have traveled across the country. And uh, this is where uh, I store them so that people can come and see them. And, and uh, mostly pieces go to museums at this point. Right. Do some good work, Mark. Thanks, Adam. Look at that. I know you cut the inside of that out. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you come over here, you can see this is using my cone uh, separation technique. This is where the chainsaw mm -hmm. comes in and cuts the cone out of the yeah out of the wood. Another one over here, which I've seen over there in your in your other workshop. Yeah. And and the idea is that not only does it um, you know, help not waste wood, but it but it also creates a really wonderful texture on mm -hmm. the inside. Oh yeah. Um, and like the piece over there, uh, this technique, the chainsaw lathe uh, cone separation technique, is is a signature of my of my work. Adam, what really happened with uh, the thing with Keith Fenner? What do you think? The thing with Keith, I think it was all set up. I think it was all set up, and I think they were all involved with it. And uh, <laughs> Tom wanted to play a nice little joke on me, and and uh, <laughs> he got me. He got me. He uh, kind of threw me off guard there with the with the whole fake story of with a with a gift, <laughs> and then the uh, of course the the Chuck key breaks, and then I'm I'm just kind of put on the spot there, and then then. Keith sails off with a victory. So, yeah, they're they're all in on it. It was fixed. Oh, yeah, it was definitely fixed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, you know, are you are you you going to get uh, vengeance next oh. time? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that, that uh, next year is going to be different. No <laughs> doubt about it. You know, we, we do that stuff for, the, for our viewers, for the fans out there. We have a lot of guys that watch us and there's a lot of eyes on us and that, that just turned into a friendly conversation and and we we definitely like to put on that little show for our viewers out there and I know they get a lot of enjoyment out of that you know and now they have something to look forward to for next time right <laughs> is it competitive between you guys uh, I think I think when it comes to that that four jaw comp it's going to be competitive now it wasn't <laughs> before it was just for fun but I uh, think they kind of turned it into a whole new competition there. <laughs> I've always tried to make my work not only look good, but fit like, the, like it's supposed to. You know, the tolerance is there. But I'm very picky about how something looks whenever I create it. I want it to look top notch. I want it to have good finishes on it. I want it to look like it's supposed to. And... I don't, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. I just like to put out good work and, and I have for a long time. So every piece that I make, I try to make it to the best of my ability and, and make it not only fit good, but look good too, especially if it's for a customer. I, I want the customer to be happy with what he's paying for and them to say, wow, that's some, that's some great work. I want to come back to this guy. You know, he really he really cares about his work and, and he and he puts out a good product there. I always strive to uh, do the best I can at what I do. So I just left Mark's place, his other his other building back there, and behind me is the is an old tobacco barn. And I wanted to show it to you before I head out because this is actually how you leave the property here. And I believe he said this was made around 1930, 1935-ish. This used to be a tobacco plantation here. You can see the, the fields out here. This was all tobacco. And this was one of the buildings that they used. How you like this one, Brian? 
That'd make a nice barn shop too. I thought the car looks pretty cool by it myself. <laughs> All right, so I'm leaving, and I'm on my way over to Tallahassee now. I'm going to go over there and see Alex. But, Mark, if you're watching, I really appreciate the hospitality. Him and, and his wife, they uh, they fed me some lunch, and he showed me around his, his place back there, which is absolutely amazing. So I had a good time back there. Thanks, Mark. All right, so we're on the road. Just headed up to Moultrie. Should be there pretty soon, and I'm excited. Ready to find some tools. Parts is what he meant. Find some <laughs> parts. parts. We're on the hunt for Mopar parts, anything, anything Mopar, that's cool. And uh and tools. It's gotta gotta be good tools. Yeah man, quality stuff. Mm -hmm. So at a good price. Hey, absolutely. So we're excited, we're we're ready to get there and, and check it out. Hopefully I'll we'll see something cool and I'll get a video of it if I do all right we're here we just we just made it to Moultrie and we're loading up there she is we're actually on the end of it this time I'm gonna start on this end and work that way we got us a power wagon bringing our our drinks and be able to carry our stuff yeah, hopefully we'll find some cool stuff. So here we go. All right, we're in the gate. First glimpses, we see a Chrysler balloon over here. So we're gonna come down here and check it out. Nice lot of machinist tools here, this guy's got. We just went down the very first row of tools, which was back that way. And here's here's just the edge of the car corral. We're not we're not going to hit this yet, but we just this is where the end of the rows are. So we'll turn back around and go the other way and just work our way all the way down. But there's a car corral. That's a heck of a smoking rig. And good quality fab work there. That's some cool metal art over here. A lot of plasma cut stuff of all, all types and flavors. I got that bike. There's a guy I usually get some really good deals from. He's got a lot of nice stuff to pick from. Check this out. Look at that bad boy. Oh yeah. You see anything over there you like? I'm about to go dig through it. Yeah. Really? Cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, that's the, uh, huh? It's on. Oh, that's bad. He just took some of my money, a lot of it. <laughs> always. <laughs> I always come and mean, see him. What do you mean, some? Always. Yeah, well, you always got good always stuff. Your money. Look at the tap wrenches. So, we got some tap wrenches, a Starrett Square. We got us a 20 in, Jacob's Chuck, a number nine card <laughs> tap wrench. And I'm still working on them on that Wilton there.
Yep. All righty. That's it. All it's, right. on the, it's on the gimbal mount. Okay. Oh, man, that's sweet. Yeah. Now you're making some video. Yeah, well, great. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, man. I done cleaned out his uh, tap wrench collection here. There's just some A bomb size clamps right there. Fun, Hold it still, I ain't got it tight yet. <laughs> Arms be shaking. Shit. That's a big Well guys, this is the very first time that I've actually made it from one end to the one end from the swap meet area all the way to the other end. We're at the back end where the planes are. And like I said, first time I made it through the whole thing. So now I'm gonna work my way back up to the front and see what else I can find. This is the kind of stuff he's got here. He's got a nice collection. real tools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's got some nice stuff. Yeah, I'm slowly digging out stuff out of my building up north that I bought 10, 15 years ago. Oh, yeah? When I bought at machine auctions. I thought, okay, that's it. This stuff's got to go. It's been sitting on a shelf too long. <laughs> and that, and that uh, I think that depth mic, I've had that on a shelf forever. Yeah. It's a Lufkin. Yeah. In fact, that that one indicator I sold him. I think they, that even that last one. Now, some of that stuff I had sitting on the shelf for a while. I'm slowly getting rid of it. Yeah. I knew someday that I would drag it out and start selling it. And I'm kind of glad I did hang on to it because yeah, there's nothing left to buy. You go to machine auctions today, there's just nothing there. Well, you got some good stuff to pick from. And what's happening now to machine auctions, the guy wants to sell out, he calls one guy and sells out everything. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's what happens. There's no auction. They just call one guy. And there's a guy up in Illinois I know who does that. They'll call him up and say, look it, I want a million for everything. All the bridge ports, all the lays. Whatever, he'll just come in and he'll clean the place out. Yeah. There's one I don't have. Greenfield seven and a half. tried to get a couple of videos of some tools and some of the vendors that I had seen. But yeah, you didn't see very much of what's actually out here, did they? Oh no. no yeah. we, we just got done walking for five hours. Yeah. So. I would suggest that if you're a car guy or tool guy, anything automotive related, you should just come yourself and check this place out. 
and enjoy it for yourself. I'm happy. I loaded up with some tools, <laughs> spent some money, and I had a good time. So come and check it out. Moultrie, Georgia. We come once a year. This is the November show. Hold on a second. As Alex is doing this little project. see very often. Got a five speed. Alright, so we made it back to Alex's house here from Moultrie and just hanging out, and I'm I'm checking out the uh, the score from today, the tools that I pick up. So I figured we would just kind of do a a uh, segment out here on the back of the tailgate before I load them all up and and show you what I picked up. So I ran, I found quite a few tap wrenches, and if you follow me, you know that I, I like collecting tap wrenches and tap handles. So I got quite a few of those, and a couple of them is helping to round out the collection on the sizes that I don't have. So, and I just kind of ran into some other things. Some some stuff was uh, kind of like wish list stuff and what have you. So we got several tap wrenches right here, and there's actually four of these Greenfield number fives. And and I was really surprised that some of these that I picked up, they have a lot of the the nice color case hardening still on them. That was really really amazing like this one was 15 there was most of those were 15 bucks right there this is one that i thought was pretty neat i i think it's a shop made tap wrench i'm not sure but look at the look at the hardening on it and yeah, it's a good quality made tool that somebody probably made We've had a couple of the little small ones right here uh, this is a green fill this is a general and that's a really clean general tap wrench this one is a number three standard tool company tap wrench. And this is one that I really enjoyed finding right here. This is a card number 11. And I've already got a couple of the cards. And this is a size I don't have. So now I've got, I believe, a 9, 10, and 11. And card made some really fine tap wrenches in their day. This thing is just ultra smooth. It doesn't even look like it's been used. The uh, jaws just look really clean. And then I found this guy so towards the end of the day, and I really enjoyed finding this one here because it's a Greenfield number seven and a half. And I, I don't have a seven and a half, so it's a, it's a good score for the collection right there. I've got two of the number eights, and they're quite a bit bigger than this. That was pretty cool. We got the 20 in Jacob's Chuck. It's in really good shape. Just needs a. It really just needs to have a little bit of oil in it, but uh, and cleaned up. But that was a good score. I've been wanting to find one of these. Got the arbor with it there too, but I don't know if I'm going to use that one yet or not because I'd rather have one with a number four Morse taper. That one I believe is a three Morse taper. So that was pretty cool. Got a little Sterrett square. Uh, it's one I don't have. Wilton Power Arm Jr. that they wanted seven dollars for. I thought that was a pretty good deal for this thing, so I picked it up. Got a nice assortment of boring bars right here that take the CCMT style of uh, insert. We got a three quarter, and I think that's a five eighths, and then a three eighths right there. We got a pretty cool turning tool with an insert that looks like it's set up for cutting aluminum. Some roughing end mills, got a nice bigger roughing end mill right there, that's brand new, some cutoff wheels. Nicholson files, USA made Nicholson files. Metric 
thread restoring file right there. Some file handles. Guy had a whole box of these things right here for 50 cent. So I picked up a few for the new files. And uh, yeah, Phoebe wants to get in on the shot. <laughs> She's over here checking it out. I got these for my brother. He's been looking for some of these vice grips and they were asking five bucks a piece. So I got him four of those. And uh, these are some old license plates that David found and he picked them up for his, for his garage. So that was pretty cool. And I got some sheet metal, sheet metal hammers from my brother Kevin. And these are Stanley. There's, there's two Stanleys. And then this one right here, the uh, S-Wing. So, good deal on those. And then an Atlas chipping hammer that I thought was nice. I don't have one like that, so pretty cool. Got some sandpaper back there. And then uh, this gallon of evapor rust. I offered the guy $10 for it, and he took it. I'm going to have to put me some new nails up on the board and start hanging up some more of these tap wrenches now. So that's it. That's all for the tools, and I had a good time. I think Alex and David. Oh, yeah. They uh, saw some good cars out there. Yeah, they went and checked out all the cars. And he got to see the car. They, they both went and seen the cars, and uh, I never even made it out there. But I did get to see all of the, the tooling vendors this time, and that was pretty cool. Always a good time. Always recommended, too. So that's about it. We might, we might get into something later. Who knows? If we do, I'll make sure I have the camera on. <laughs>